Hello everyone and welcome to 2021. I'm Mike Ingledew and I'm all about making you successful with your integrated product support strategies. Now a very happy new year to you. I hope that 2021 is kinder to us all. 2020 was, let's just put that in the archives and uh, put that to one side. I know it's been a massive challenge for a lot of us and uh, you know, but we're now gonna get positive and we're going to move into 2021 together. So as promised, I am going to be releasing a weekly YouTube video at 6 p.m. UK time every Sunday uh, that's hopefully going to add some value to your projects, to your organisation or to your decision processes. Now, we're going to be kicking off uh, today with the five questions that I get asked without fail on any of my S1000D training stroke consultancy tasks. Now, at TDW, we have developed some of the leading independent S1000D, S2000M training courses, which means what I mean by that is that we're coming at it very much from a specification perspective and not a technology or a software perspective or a specific viewpoint. We're coming at it completely independent and saying this is where it's good, this is where it's bad, and this are the kind of things that you need to avoid. And we're going to look at... Uh, what the kind of questions that I get asked when we're delivering those training courses. Our understanding and XML and S1000D training course has been delivered now to hundreds of students worldwide. We've delivered it in the classroom and we've delivered it online. And when I deliver those, I always have in the back of my mind a understanding and a knowledge that this will turn into some kind of pseudo consultancy. It always turns into a pseudo consultancy. And I get some fantastic questions that A, help develop my training courses. You guys actually, by asking your questions, develop the content and the material that we deliver here at TDW. But I always set aside time for these kind of questions. So what are these questions? Well, today I'm going to list the five questions that we're going to answer over the coming weeks. And you will then, over the next few weeks, I will go into a little bit more detail about what it is and how I would answer that question or how I would approach that question uh, in an S1000D training environment. So whether I'm delivering to technical authors, project, project managers, contracting managers or senior executives, how would I answer that question? And these questions really do come from you guys. They come from you in terms of how can we get the absolute maximum out of our information strategies. So what are these five questions that I'm going to answer? Now, I've pulled out five. I could have pulled out 20. I could have pulled out a whole raft more. So I'll keep those in reserve in case we start running out of material for YouTube, but I don't think we will. We've got plenty of content planned right the way up until April right now. So the first question, and these are in no particular order. I'm just not, not they're not kind of in an order of um, priority or importance. These are the order that I'm going to answer them in over the coming weeks. So the first question is, is I get this seems to be a tremendous amount of information that we need to gather and put together for an S1000D project. Uh, it's only a technical publication. Are there any alternatives now? It's a sensible question and it's a reasonable question. On my training courses, we do look at alternatives to S1000D and, you know, because S1000D is not for all projects. And, you know, so what I do is I look at, you know, what else is out there in terms of how can we maximize our information strategy? So we're going to look at that one. What are the alternatives and why S1000D should be looked at slightly differently than just a technical publication specification. So that's question number one that we're going to be answering. The second question always comes up, and I don't like the term uh, legacy data, but what should we be doing with our legacy data? And, you know, there are organizations out there that spend a lot of time advising organizations on how to convert data to S1000D or to XML or to other specifications or standards. Now, in fact, my last training course of 2020, a huge discussion was about uh, data conversion. And I introduced the customer to uh, to a couple of the TDW vendor members that could help them. Now, there are 
uh, scenarios for conversion that we will talk about. We always spend a little bit of time on methods of conversion and why you should convert and when you shouldn't convert on our training courses. So I don't like the term uh, legacy data because it implies that it's old, out of date, no longer valued or valid, uh, when in fact it is. And so we're talking about file formats. And when we're talking about file formats, that's the kind of thing that we're trying to get it from an old file format into something that's a little bit more modern. So what do we do with our legacy or existing data that uh, we need to then reuse and employ within our S1000D environment is another question that we get asked regularly. And the question that I love answering is where is the ROI? Where is the return on investment? If I'm going to invest all of this time, energy and money into an S1000D project, where am I going to see the benefit? Where am I going to see the return? And on my training courses, we've got something called the S1000D cost curve. And we compare military platforms to commercial platforms. And we look at where the ROI is or where I think the ROI is in terms of an S1000D project. So I'm going to pull out some of those key features and talk about where do I believe the ROI is. And, you know, then hopefully you guys can add into that where you believe the ROI is. And I know that some of you, some of the organizations I'm supporting right now are developing a business case for S1000D. So this will help you. And again, you know, I'm only going to be pulling out elements of what we talk about in terms of ROI because we have a whole area where we look at the strengths, the weaknesses, the opportunities and threats of the S1000D specification. And, you know, part of that is where is that ROI? Where are we going to see this return? And we talk about it uh, in much more detail in about three or four weeks time. Huge, huge topic that I always put aside at least a couple of hours is what are the best software tools that are out there for us to get going. Now, I always get asked my opinion on software tools. I always get my, asked my opinion on software vendors and service vendors. And I just mentioned that, you know, I introduced some TDW members to uh, to a, um, a data conversion opportunity recently because, you know, personally, we don't get involved in that, but we can advise, uh, you know, the best organizations to work with. I always get asked my opinion on software and there is a part of our training course where we look at the tools, A, the tools that I use and the tools that you need per um, per domain and the swim lanes. We have a, a swim lane that we look at where software sits and the kind of tools that you could be using, should be using and must be using. So I'll answer that for you. Uh, I do spend a lot of time answering questions around software and tools and some of them are not always as obvious you know we have the mainstream software vendors of course that are producing all of the ind industry strength kind of s1000d type tools but there are other tools out there that we can use at the fraction of the cost that uh, can get us going with an s1000d strategy so and if you have, there's some stuff on youtube already that i've done around this now, this one I like to answer, and this normally comes from when I'm advising or talking to senior managers. And this specific question generally comes from those that, A, don't have the time or don't want to worry about the weeds, getting into the weeds of why we do things in a specific way. And they just say, just show me what good looks like, Mike. And, you know, so I have to spend my time advising and saying, you know, well, you have to think about it from this perspective and this perspective. What does good look like? And, you know, so we'll answer that uh, week five and we'll have a look at what I think good looks like. And I might throw in there some of the pitfalls as well that, uh, you know, where we're not making it as clear and as obvious to our supply chain as we could be doing. So those are the five questions I'm going to be answering for you over the next five weeks. So make sure you subscribe, hit the bell button, and you'll be notified when that video is released. So if you have any questions for me, please do email them in. I'm more than happy to add them to the schedule in terms of uh, getting them onto YouTube or answering them. If you want more from TDW, please do just consider joining us as a full member. We, we are now supported by almost 30 of the vendors around the world. 
And we also have those of you who are individual and corporate members that access our training material via TDW+. A huge thank you to everybody who supports us and makes it easier for me to develop and deliver this kind of free content for YouTube. So until next Sunday, I hope you have a great week and a great start to the year. Please do get in touch and I look forward to seeing you next Sunday.